Hello everyone, welcome to what if Quirkless Deku becomes successor of Gogeta Part 1. Before we start please go support Ankaligan and the Black in the Black for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. This is the translated version I made. There will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this Deku is a male in this story. Chapter 1. In Japan, people had something called Quirk like the rest of the world and the same thing happened to everyone. They forgot that the origin of that power came from a fairly ancient place, but it no longer mattered because everything was going to change, inside. In one house was Inko Midoriya who was feeding her daughter. Inko. Well, I hope they eat pretty well, everyone needs to be strong to be the best heroes. Izumi. Thank you mom, I really love it. Inko. Well, you must be the best of all. Izumi. It's true with my brute force quirk I'm going to be able to be the best of all, I'm even going to surpass dad. They were the words of a young man with green hair like his sister, although with blonde locks. Inko. Just try to be the best you can be and don't end up like him. Izumi. Mom is nothing but I think I should bring her some food, she hasn't eaten anything in a while. Inko. Sounds good to me, in that case see right now that I'm just going to be preparing some things so we can go to school. That way, the girl only went to the kitchen to take a plate of food and go directly to a shed in the yard, where upon arriving she took out a padlock so she could enter quietly, only to continue on her way to a young man with green hair who was chained. Dot. Izumi. It seems like you're still alive, although to be honest I'm surprised that you can actually still move. He told the young man with chains Izuku Midoriya or almost Midoriya was in that place, because he was quirkless. Izuku. Well, let's say that despite all the blows, whippings and more, I'm simply someone capable of resisting anything, no matter how much you keep trying, it's impossible to make me end up dead. Faced with this, the girl was leaving the food to give little by little to Izuku who was only enjoying this, even though that food was ruined. Izumi. I really would like to see you outside of these things, but dead, quirkless only fill space in this world, a space that they should never reach. Izuku. Don't worry, I'm going to be free, just wait, be patient, and you'll be able to see that no one is going to have me under their control again like you have me in this place. Izumi. I don't know if you're really trying to provoke me or what you're trying to do, but whatever I do simply can't work on me, I can assure you that. Izuku. Don't be so sure, it's so easy to make you lose control, you're just a girl with a quirk that if she didn't have it, she would just fall like a leaf falls from a tree. At that the food was kicked by the girl who seemed quite upset. Izumi. You really have the balls to be quirkless to be able to talk to me like that. Izuku. As if you were my superior, look how scared I am shaking. Izumi. You miserable, disgusting rat, you are going to pay me all these insults because I myself plan to be the one to end your miserable life. Izuku. Look how scared I am, trembling so much because of such words from such a small and insignificant girl. She said it while she gave him a look of annoyance. She began to have that girl just by listening to the young man's words, until she began to hear footsteps making her move away from her while a man with blonde hair. All might. Daughter, what are you doing with this garbage? You know well that you should not approach him. Izumi. Yes, he knows, but he needed food, you know well that we can't let him starve, that's why I brought him stale food. All might. Well, in that case, come on, you have to get out of this place, you don't need to stay with that shitty trash. Saying that, the girl left but not without discreetly giving Izuku one last look before walking away. All might. Then you need to eat, she thought that quirkless were going to be useful for something, but it seems not. Izuku. Well, the supposedly great All Might, it's a disgrace that you're garbage inside, a lie with legs. I imagine what the great All Might looks like everywhere, a terrible father with his firstborn son, and he mistreats people in ways that you can't imagine. Loves. All Might. Shut your mouth, you don't know anything about that, if you continue like this you're going to end up worse. Izuku. What if I'm good for something, making you angry is something quite simple from the looks of it, anyway I'm not interested, you're just a tool for everyone. All Might. Please, you don't know what it's like to be a tool. Izuku. It's true, I don't know because they don't use me as such, I'm just something where they concentrate all their pain, all their anger, all their hatred towards other people in the form of blaming me, they even hit me for their mistakes that I had nothing to do with. What to see, I think there is something in all this, I am not a tool of society. All might. Miserable, you really want to end it in the worst possible way, but don't worry, the pain I'm going to give you is going to be mild compared to other things, you don't need to worry too much. Izuku. Please, as if it weren't enough, just because your children got a quirk to increase their strength, a quirk to be able to attract things and push them away, something quite similar to your parents is enough. In response to such a thing, he ended up receiving a blow to his stomach, causing him to end up spitting blood in response to such a thing. All Might. Shut your mouth, don't make me angrier than I already am. Izuku. That's what I mean, you're just living scum, All Might, you don't even show your true face, you don't say who you are, but you'll see everything bad comes back. All Might. 
please, it is impossible because to begin with we are in a place where nothing bad can happen, it is impossible for you to achieve something against me, since I am capable of doing everything, you are just garbage that takes up space in this world. Izuku. Well, if you want advice when I'm free and don't have these chains, you're going to have to prepare yourself, because that same moment is going to be when you have to worry about the well-being of your family member. Meanwhile, wait, just wait. All Might. Well let's see how far you go. Izuku. Just wait, All Might, you won't even know what happened. All Might. You really have high hopes of getting out believing that you can actually escape a place like this. Izuku. Please, you are nothing before me, you are going to see that sooner or later you are going to be on the floor begging for mercy only for a young man who you thought was no better than you. All Might. A lot of confidence to be just a brat without a quirk, you don't know that I can kill you in this very place. Izuku. I would like to see it with my own eyes, perhaps you are recognized by many as the strongest man in the world, but I see the truth, you are not a good person, you are just a disgusting rat who is not capable of overcoming events such as the death of his teacher. At that, he ended up receiving a blow to his stomach, causing him to spit out some blood at All Might, who only seemed annoyed by such a thing. All Might. You miserable rat, you really want to die since you are in this place, you don't care about anything, you are simply someone who believes that he can say anything about others without receiving harm in return. Izuku. There's a reason I call it rubbish, now if you'd be so kind as to let me go. But that he could only receive a knee, making him spit even louder at the man who began to raise his head just to stare at him. All Might. Listen well, you miserable quirkless cum, I've already been killed in the past, I'm not afraid of doing it again, I just have to annihilate you and end your miserable life, because it doesn't cost me anything to end you in one move. Izuku. And I thought you were more than a bag full of muscles, you show that you can talk, I guess that's progress. But that he only ended up giving another blow causing him to fall to the floor to continue hitting, and when he finished he took the young man, only so that he could begin to take off his chains, as a light began to activate in the house as a sign of an alarm, making Inko come out just to see. As All Might began to take out the young man. Inko. What are you doing? All Might. Which is obvious, I plan to get this garbage out of our lives. Inko. But it doesn't make sense for you to do it, you know well that it's not safe, and taking it out could put us in danger. All Might. No, if his organs have been destroyed by a few blows, we just have to continue this way until we completely kill him. Inko. Then just throw the body wherever, I'll take care of telling our children everything that way they won't have to keep coming back to be part of it. He said it as he began to leave, and All Might did the same, starting to jump through some houses until he reached one in particular, being that he only reached the forest where he had the bag with the young man's body. All Might. See you never, scum. With that, he threw the body deep into the forest, thinking that he could get rid of it forever, without knowing that he was actually making a mistake by taking that body out, so that it would never return to their lives. With Izuku he was in a dark space until a light began to be in front of him. Izuku. What is that? Man. You can stay calm, I'm not going to hurt you, I'm here to help you. Izuku. I don't understand, helping a quirkless doesn't make any sense if you ask me to be honest. Man 1. Well if you take it that way then I'm going to tell you that you are going to help me in something that is very important, like helping the rest of humanity. Izuku. What are you talking about? Man. The end of humanity is coming soon and I need someone to stand up to it. Izuku. What was that? Man. Although I don't think this child is suitable for so much power, he doesn't even look stable at least. Izuku. I don't know who you are, but you should stop talking like that. Man. I must at least give you a little hope. Izuku. Who says that? You just have to let yourself be seen. Man. Well, we're going to let ourselves be seen, just try to stay calm, and my name is Gogeta, the fusion of Goku and Vegeta. They were the words of a man with upward black hair with a lock of hair on his face, black eyes, a black vest showing his shapely body as having some yellow parts on the edges of the shoulders and neck, white pants with black shoes, fabrics blue at the ankles like a blue ribbon at his waist, apart from having black bracelets. He said it, revealing a large amount of pure power surrounding him, while Izuku only looked at such a thing. Chapter 2 The young man only looked at the body that was in front of him, since they were that man who was expelling an aura of pure power, and they seemed intimidating in the eyes of anyone. Izuku. I don't understand who you really are. Vegeta. I just said it, little one, I'm a Saiyan. Izuku. And what is a Saiyan? Vegeta. A Saiyan is that race of warriors who trains only, and only for battles, they think of nothing more than fighting only that's why we are born to fight, no matter where or when we are simply the best warriors in the 12 universes, although I special I am a Saiyan who is the fusion of Goku and Vegeta. Izuku. Wait, what is that thing about the 12 universes? I don't understand anything they tell me. Vegeta. I think I should give you some explanations before starting this. Izuku. I think so because I don't understand anything. Vegeta. 
Although I don't like it, it's true, we have to start from scratch, we have no other choice. But that he began to explain about the gods of creation, destruction, about other things like angels, the high priest, apart from explaining about Xenosama as the 12 universes, although before there were 18 and they were eliminated. Izuku. So really there are things that not even I understand, but anyway I would like to know why you are in this place, I don't understand. Vegeta. The universe needs strong Saiyans, we cannot allow anyone to have the opportunity to claim to be the strongest if in the end they do not manage to fight against the strongest. Izuku. So what do you mean by that? Vegeta. A cold demon called Frieza murdered our race, but in the end we took revenge on him, the point is that there are no more Saiyans in the universe for that reason we need someone to occupy that position, being a Saiyan to recreate the race. Izuku. So they want me to take charge of being a new Saiyan despite everything. Vegeta. Yes, that's right, we are going to teach you how to handle evil Kai, legendary Kai, normal and divine Kai, everything you need to be the strongest. Izuku. But this is way beyond me. Vegeta. Please listen Izuku, you are going to be a Saiyan, a member of our race, since you are going to be a Saiyan, you are not going to be someone like the rest at all, you are going to be different from the rest, someone who despite everything does not have impossible things. Izuku. So I feel like a Saiyan, nothing is impossible. Vegeta. Saiyans have no limits, we are a race without limits, a race that no one can defeat, a race in which we are proud to belong. Izuku. In truth, they are proud of that very thing. Vegeta. Yes, and if we are in front of you right now it is because we truly think that you are worthy of this, you are someone worthy of having our power, and that should make you proud. But that the young man only looked at his hands only to close it and look at the Saiyans. Izuku. I would like to know the good and the bad. Vegeta. You are going to be a Saiyan, your appearance is going to change, and you are going to stop being human, but the most important thing is that no one is going to be able to stand up to you, but that is going to happen later, apart from having our memories as abilities. Izuku. Just that. Vegeta. Another thing you should keep in mind is that you are going to be someone quite powerful, no matter what you are going to do to us. Izuku. What's wrong? Vegeta. Although the bad thing is possibly that many people want to fight you, they plan to go against you no matter what happens. Izuku. I don't care, I plan to accept this, I want to be a Saiyan so I can be the strongest of all. Vegeta. Fine, but you must understand that there is no going back once you accept it. Izuku. I understand, I accept anyway. But that they looked at each other, only to begin making green, yellow and red auras begin to surround their body, only so that in reality a bag that was in the forest, began to come out Izuku, who was only beginning to be okay to walk to a lake that was nearby, noticing that his appearance changed as he had black hair apart from having a lock in front of his face. Izuku. Why do I look different? Vegeta. Now you are a Saiyan although you look the same as me when he was a simple human. Izuku. Why do I look like you? Vegeta. Well, to be honest, when you accept this thing of having my abilities and memories, you must understand that you are going to have an appearance like mine. Izuku. So that answers a few things I guess. Vegeta. Anyway, we don't have time for this kind of thing, we have to prepare. Izuku. Prepare for what? Vegeta. We don't have time for these kinds of things, we should do other more important things like think about things that are truly valuable. Izuku. Just tell me what I should do. Vegeta. Right now we must look for a place where we can rest, and that way we will have somewhere to live for a certain time. Vegeta. The more you learn, the less time you will spend living in the forest, something that will be very useful. Izuku. I guess that's good from what I come to think. Vegeta. And it is if you don't want to live on the streets. Izuku. So if I want to go back to the city I'll be able to do it because no one will recognize me. Vegeta. Yes you're going to be able to do it. Izuku. That's great. Vegeta. In any case, you must be careful with your movements, don't let anyone discover you otherwise we will possibly find ourselves in very big problems. Izuku. Okay, I guess I understand it at least a little. Vegeta. Now that we've cleared everything up, let's start with all this and think about your training. In that way I began to train him by making him run around the place, lift some weights, sit-ups, apart from how to know how to fight hand-to-hand, -hand, apart from learning other things such as the use of Kai, making him learn to use it in different ways apart from the other ways of Kai being Kai weapons. You can form different types of weapons or materials based on Kai in order to use it in battle to kill the enemy, in a somewhat immediate way to be able to kill the enemy. Light and feeling. He managed to learn how to feel normal Kai, how to be able to learn to fly through the skies, since he had to learn some other things, such as increasing his abilities based on Kai, and how to feel a normal power, as well as another divine one, since that suited him. To be quite good later. Normal Kai. The Kai that the greatest number of people can use at any time, being the most basic to be able to use at any time. Evil Kai. 
the type of Kai that can be used to generate destruction wherever it goes, being a type of Kai that was not used so much in return that it had to subtract the positive Kai. Legendary Kai. The second Kai that he barely managed to learn, being a type of Kai that made it difficult for him because it was a fairly large power, having a great increase in all of his abilities when using it, having a deep green aura. Divine Kai. It was the type of Kai that he used the least, since it was the one that needed training the most among all of his abilities. Creation. A skill that he could learn to be able to create a certain amount of things, being quite difficult for Izuku to be able to use it, since it was only for simple materials. Destruction. It was a skill that he only used when he had to pass somewhere apart from only using it when his enemy did not move in any way. Another thing he was able to learn was Raikon's abilities, making him able to learn a lot from them. Hamehameha. An attack that was a Kai wave that was normally used with both hands, but he could use it with his feet or with one hand, although they were not as effective as using it with his two hands, being the one he used the most. Lethal Cannon. An attack of pure power that he used only with one hand, being an attack that was only to be able to eliminate the opponent, although if he used it in a more appropriate way, he would be able to use it to prevent his opponent from leaving dead but quite hurt. Ali Cannon. First, the user puts two fingers together and their hands at chest level, facing the direction of the opponent, so that the palm of one hand appears on the back of the other. Resounding Explosion. Charges energy and lunges at his opponent, delivering three punches in a row and kicking him into the air, unleashing a powerful and gigantic explosion at him. Evil Barrier. He can surround himself with a wide-range energy shield, which protects him from the attacks and blows of his enemies. Planetary Crusher. A powerful ability that allows the user to generate a giant sphere of Kai with which they launch against their enemy, causing great destruction. Stardust Breaker. Highly effective cosmic energy sphere that rapidly processes the purification of malice energy from him or the souls of the victim of the technique, leaving only the good spirit of the person it was thrown at. Stardust Shower. Charges a large sphere of Kai and then fires it in the form of multiple bolts, similar to a rain shower. Punishing Impulse. Attacks his opponent with invisible blasts that impact his torso, instantly moving behind him. Punishing Shield. Slashes his arm in the air to create a barrier capable of reflecting Kai waves. Divine Punisher. He carries two energy spheres in his two hands and launches them at his opponent while dodging his attacks. Meganova. One of his strongest abilities being a Kai sphere in part using Divine Kai along with the legendary, evil and legendary, being his most unstable attack, but at the same time his most destructive attack, taking the form of a sun with his last beam being low. The sleeve in case of losing in a fight apart from being the one who needed training the most. Maximum Volley Blast. Launches a large amount of Kai blasts at the same time towards the opponent and the place or things that are surrounding him, being an attack that occupied a large amount of space and was quite effective in hitting the enemy. Divine Kamehameha. It is like the Kamehameha, being a much more powerful one by including Divine Kai, being even more effective than the normal one, being capable of hurting Divine Beings. Divine Lethal Cannon. It is like the normal one, but it had the effect of being able to hurt Divine Things, by having part of the Divine Kai being more effective than the normal one. Double Divine Lethal Cannon. It is like the normal one, but the difference is that it takes up a large amount of space, apart from being much more powerful because it is used with both hands, being even more effective than the previous ones. Maximum Divine Volley Flurry. Like the normal flurry, only it can affect people with Divine Kai, being more destructive and being quite powerful in case of making attacks over large spaces. In this way time passed and the young man was able to grow in that time, only to be able to be stronger than before, and now he was able to learn about how to transform into Phase 1 of the Super Saiyan. Now Izuku was only leaving his house that he could get since during that time, he had to face some bandits just to get money to have a house. Izuku. Wow, how time flies, although I suppose it's normal for it to be that way with everything that happens. He set it to look inside the house, seeing at times a silhouette of his teachers who began to disappear with a smile, making Izuku have one in the same way. Chapter 3, in a nearby part being the income of the UA. There were some people going to be able to take the entrance test, and a chestnut was walking quite calmly, just being calm, just so that without realizing it, she would simply end up tripping, but she didn't fall because she ended up colliding with the back of a young girl. I'm sorry, I didn't look where I was going, I'm sorry. At that, the young man only turned around to have a smile at the girl, Izuku being the cause of that smile. Izuku. Nothing happens, I can tell you were about to trip so nothing happens. Girl. Anyway, I must apologize, it's not good that I do that without apologizing first. Izuku. I already said that it doesn't matter, by the way, my name is Izuku God, it's a pleasure. Girl. Well, it's a pleasure, my name is Yuraka Chako, it's a pleasure to meet you. Izuku. I can tell that you are going to take the UA entrance exam. I was just going to that part, do you want to come with me? Iraka. I think so, come on. 
In this way, the two of them began to walk while they began to talk to each other without having problems, being that while they were walking they only met each other until they reached the test where they had to separate, and Izuku only began to walk until he ended up in a room where he, he was calm without doing anything. Present Mick was only giving the same explanation of the original story until he was interrupted by a young man with blue hair. Boy. Hello everyone, my name is Tenyalita, I would like to say that I could notice an error in the brochures. Present Mick. And what is that error? I would like to know. Lita. Well, I mentioned three point robots, but a fourth robot appears, that is a very important error that the UA must take into account. And if they really are the most prestigious academy then he should be ashamed, and the one in the back is bothering the rest of the students, it seems that he is not ready for this test, therefore he should leave. He said it while pointing at Bakugo who only got angry at such a thing to appear quite upset and was going to continue if it weren't for a hand being placed on his shoulder, making them see Izuku who was calm at such a thing. Izuku. Hey, you better try to relax with the UA. It is true that they are an error but very small, something that the UA. You shouldn't be ashamed because it shows that we can all explain that to ourselves or simply that present Mick was going to explain things only you interrupted him. Lita. But then I was wrong to interrupt him. Izuku. Not only that, you are saying in a way who is ready and who is not as if you know everything, something that is not true, and you should calm down if you really want to stay in this place, because you seem to be too nervous just trying to upset the rest. Even that, the young man only sat down so that present Mick could continue talking. Present Mick. Well if I can continue I'm just going to say a few things about these topics, the fourth robot only has no points, so it's better that you try to ignore it, it's best for everyone. She said it making everyone only understand this, when they went to the doors to start they were only calm, although Lita tried to repress Izumi under the gaze of Izuku, who could only approach before this. Izuku. Hey, what's going on? Lita. I'm trying to make it clear that his attitude was not good. Izuku. Come on boy, I told you before, you don't know who's ready and who isn't, leave this little girl alone and let her show what she's capable of once she can start. Lita. But it wasn't good anyway. Izuku. It seems like you like to question people a lot no matter who it is, even if it's a senior commander or someone equal. Lita. It's not that. Izuku. Then please go away and leave everyone alone. We tried to get our nerves out to start. But that the young man began to leave under the gaze of Izumi who gave a sigh at such a thing. Izumi. Thank you really for getting that boy off my back. Izuku. Don't try to thank me for anything, just that I don't let anyone bother you or anything, if anyone is going to be able to take revenge or humiliate it, it should be me. Izumi. How? I don't understand. Izuku. It's true we start from the beginning, my name is Izuku God, although before I was Midoriya. He said it, extending his hand before the gaze of Izumi, who only looked at this somewhat surprised, although he could not believe something that the young man managed to notice. Izumi. I don't know why you say that, but well it seems like we used to have the same last name. Izuku. Come on, the last time we saw each other was when you brought me food to the shed, I was tied with chains, and all that, except that All Might thought he had killed me, or should I call him Tashinori. He said it with a smile without anyone being able to hear such a thing other than Izumi, who looked surprised at the young man who was in front of her, until they began to hear how the doors began to open. Present Mick. What are you waiting for? They must start, there is no countdown. Izuku. Well we'll have to start with this. He said it as he began to leave before the gaze of Izumi who only began to run, inside the place where Izuku passed were only pieces of robots being destroyed, as if it were nothing before the young man who was only advancing as if it were nothing. Nezu. It seems like this year we have quite a few kids who are very good at this. Azawa. Yes, but we cannot trust ourselves because we see them this way, we still have to test them properly. Nezu. If it is true, we must think things as they should be. Sniper. I say we drop zero points now to see what they can do with something like that. Cementos. It's true, aside from that, I'm interested in a young man who seems to destroy everything in his path. Nezu. So let's say no more, let's begin. In the fake city Izuku was walking, who was just calm as if it were nothing. Izuku. Well, there are no more robots left by the looks of it, that leaves me thinking I can just leave soon. At one point I began to feel a tremor only to see how a robot began to leave a building with zero points, making Izuku smile because of that, although he managed to notice Yuraka, who was screaming for help because she was among the people. Rubble, when the foot of the zero point stepped on the rubble a few meters away from him, Izuku ended up appearing with the brunette in his arms, only to put it aside. Yuraka. Thanks again for this. Izuku. Well now I guess you owe me more than one, but anyway I guess I have to fight that thing. He said it, forming a sphere of Kai that he threw towards the zero points, hitting it so that in one minute the head ended up exploding, causing it to fall to the floor, surprising everyone by the ease with which the young man managed to destroy the enormous robot. Iraka. That was impressive. Izuku. 
In fact it wasn't much just a few small things, I guess you must be able to get up a little I imagine. Uraka. Actually, my foot isn't too bad to be honest. Izuku. Then let me help you a little just for things. Uraka. Well, thank you very much for this. She said it while she began to be helped by the young man, only for them to end up meeting recovery girl, who was in charge of Uraka. Since then, the young man could only begin to leave as while he was walking he began to feel a very powerful presence only for him to leave. Flying until ending up near the atmosphere. Izuku. What is this presence? It is very powerful. Man. It seems like you've forgotten who the gods are yet. At these words he could only turn around seeing that it was Beerus and Wiss who were the cause of them. Izuku. Mr. Beerus is on Earth. Beerus. Yes and it seems that you have done very well as Gajeta's new carrier. Izuku. What is he doing in this place? Bills. I'm just passing through, I'd like to know, I came for something else, but I don't remember what it was. Wiss. Mr. Beerus training. Beerus. It's true, I realize that you have good fighting power that still needs to increase, and that's why I want to offer you a training that will take your body beyond your limits to be the strongest Saiyan of all. Even that, the young man only began to stare at him, having doubts about it, only to sigh. Izuku. Excuse me, Mr. Beerus, but I don't want his training, I want to get stronger through my own means. Beerus. Well, if you don't want to then you can't, I guess I just have to deal with other things. Wiss. But Mr. Beerus remember that we must destroy some planets and not others. Beerus. Yes I know, we are going to do the same thing, but listen carefully Izuku just try to make yourself stronger, because very powerful people are going to come soon, people that you cannot face just by increasing your power, be careful with your movements. Izuku. Yes, I know, Mr. Beerus, very powerful people are going to come to confront me, and I am not afraid of them, whoever comes, I am a Saiyan, the most powerful race in the universes. He said it as he began to return to his house, and the deity began to have a smile at the young man's words that he had just said as if it were nothing. Whis. It seems like you're remembering something, Mr. Beerus. But that the deity only turned his back on the planet while he still had his smile. Beerus. I only remembered one thing, those two idiots from before only that. Whis. So that's it, then we better go, there must be delicious food somewhere in this universe. Beerus. Let's do that before the fat man from Champa comes, although I would like to know if the enemies are ready. Whis. Everyone is ready to fight, we just have to let them go one by one, and go fight Izuku is all we have to do. Beerus. Great, that's just what I want to hear. At least let's make sure it can get louder. He said it as he began to leave the place with his assistant, and Izuku was just going to his house, while well, he thought about the things that just happened. Chapter 4 The days went by in which Izuku was only doing his best to live with Bulchi, who almost got into trouble all the time, making Izuku think that it was not a solution, but that there were more problems that he was going to have just to keep him going. With his own until he found out that he was able to enter the UA. Making him prepare to go, at the academy the young man was just walking calmly without having any problems around the place completely, as the young man walked until he got to his class. Izuku. Fence 1 it isn't that impressive from the looks of it, I'm not even surprised by the door on it. When he entered the place he managed to see Momo at the back of everything making him walk to that part to sit next to the jet. Momo. So we ended up in the same class. Izuku. I guess so, I just hope it's not as boring as the others. Momo. Well, it's the UA. It must have classes in which we can use our quirks. Izuku. That's right, it's probably a little more fun than the rest of the classes at our previous school. Momo. I hope we can try hard and do our best. He said it while he had a smile on his face, at one point they heard a noise at the door, making them see how Lita was apologizing to Izumi about the entrance exam. Izuku. That annoyance again. Momo. Do you know him? Izuku. If he was quite annoying in the entrance exam, he was definitely a living nuisance. Momo. At least there must be something good for sure. Izuku. I doubt it too much to be honest. At one point he managed to notice how a giant caterpillar began to come out of nowhere, with his teacher Azawa who was only standing. Azawa. Hello everyone, I'm your teacher Azawa and I know it's too sudden, but I need you to go to the training yard and put on your UA sports uniforms. He said it while he showed the UA sports uniforms. Making them go to change, when they came out some of the girls were only looking at Izuku's body that was a little noticeable in the sports uniform. Izuku. I don't think it suits me at all. Momo. In fact, it looks pretty good on you even if it doesn't seem like it. Izuku. If you say so. Azawa. Everyone listen now, Izuku, you were first in the entrance exam, I need you to throw a ball into a circle using your quirk, and I want you to do it with all your strength. Izuku. It's okay if he says so. He said it while he passed in front of everyone with a ball to throw, making a current of air, causing some to have to cover themselves for the same reason, just to see how Azawa looked at the device. Mina. What are you seeing, professor? 
Bizawa. This lets me know how much I casted. He said it while he showed 1321.75 meters surprising everyone by the strength of the young man who was in front of everyone who was calm, as if it were nothing. This clearly left everyone surprised by the enormous strength of the young man who was his companion. Hiroshima. He must really have a powerful quirk. Izuku. Let's just continue with this, I don't feel like wasting time anymore. Azawa. Well, as you saw, from now on everyone is going to start doing the following activities with their quirks. Hiroshima. This is going to be great, I can't wait to get started. Mina. Quite funny although it doesn't seem like it. Azawa. So fun and great, let's make it more interesting. Whoever comes last in this test will undoubtedly be expelled from the UA, I just need to know if you have questions. Lita. Yes, Sensei, I could notice that we have more companions than we suppose, but I would like to know about that. Azawa. Well, about that, the director wants to try something new of putting more students, so we're just going to start the UA that way. Now that we said that let's get things started. He said it, making them start that way, since in the race Izuku managed to surpass Lita and speed by a few milliseconds, making it clear that he was much faster than him. In the lateral jumps test, some were beginning to think that Mineta was going to, to be in first place, if not because when Izuku was he managed to demonstrate great ability by coming in first place, so that the same thing happened in the long jump, surpassing everyone with great ease to continue with the pressure strength test reaching 2 o'clock tons, being the strongest student in class 1A, being that he simply surpassed everyone, even in throwing the ball, he proved to be in first place. Apart from that Izawa was seeing all the quirks of his students being. Izuku's Saiyan quirk allows him to have many really powerful abilities with which he can fight without problems in battle, although much about it is unknown. Momo can create anything as long as he knows what material it is made of. Bakugo creates explosions based on his sweat without problems. Afshodo can create ice with the right side of his body and the other fire. Sayu has the abilities of a frog, allowing her to be able to fight hand to hand with an advantage. Iraka can remove gravity by touching things. Izumi can throw fireballs without problems from her mouth. Okoyami has an entity inside her called Dark Shadow. Shoji can create body parts of himself like arms, mouths and other things. Mina can throw amounts of acid without problems to be able to fight. Hiru has hacks on his ears that allow him to deal damage and hear things around him. Aminari generates electricity from his body in large quantities. Aoyama launches a laser from his navel without problems although he can't use it much. Sato possesses great brute force layers to increase with sugar. Toru's quirk allows him to be invisible so he can fight. Lita has motors in her legs which allows her to have greater speed. Hiroshima can harden his body without problems having great resistance. Hoda communicates with animals through his voice. Siro can throw tape from his elbows to move. Mineta has sticky spheres on her head that allow her to throw them. That way he looked at the quirks of each of his students who were present in the place until they finished. Haminari. Without a doubt Izuku is the strongest of all of us, I can't even believe he has so much power. Sato. I can't even imagine his true brute strength in battle. He said it while the young man was just calm and doing nothing about it. Izuku. Vala was too boring, this wasn't even a challenge. Mineta. But there is a threat to expel us. Izuku. Please, only those who do not demonstrate potential will be expelled, the positions, the places and all that does not matter, what really matters is knowing our potential, how far we can reach. Am I wrong, professor? But that they looked at Azawa who was bored only to sigh at that. Azawa. You're not wrong, I'm surprised that you saw it that way without problems. With that, everyone looked surprised at how false it was to expel them all, since they were only looking at Izuku who was calm. Izuku. Well, now that we've cleared things up, I guess we can go now since classes are over. Azawa. If you can leave, everyone stays, but you can see the positions to know who came first and who came last. He said it, starting to make everyone see the scores, after a while Izuku was walking calmly as he was passing by All Might who at one point put his hand on Izuku's shoulder in order to talk. All Might. Hey son, I guess we should talk. Izuku. Shut your mouth old man, I'm not your old man, I'm free to do whatever I want. He said it while he took off All Might's hand to continue walking calmly. All Might. Please come home, your mother really wants to see you, she misses you. Izuku. He misses hurting me, he doesn't miss anything else, and since we've cleared it up just leave me alone, otherwise you'll know my anger. All Might. Please, I just want to have everything right with you again. He said it with clear hopes that he would hear him, but the young man was walking without problems, as if he had not heard him. Izuku. Go beg someone else, I'm not going to fall into your traps. He said it while he was walking so he could leave UA being that he went directly to his house without problems, only to enter seeing how his entire house was in good condition, without having a single part in poor condition. Izuku. It seems like it came at a good time, especially if I want to know who broke into my house. Girl. 
It was time for you to arrive, I thought we had to be waiting all the time. But that he saw a girl with short white hair with violet eyes and green skin, she had white gloves, a violet shirt attached to her body like shorts of the same color, she had armor that was covering part of her stomach like having a green dot. And white combat boots. The second person was a boy with jet black hair with a scar on his cheek, and he had black eyes, a black long-sleeved shirt tight to his body, and violet pants of the same color, as well as white boots with green tips, bracelets black with white edges being like armor, and ending with a kind of green fur tied to his waist. Izuku. Who are they? Boy. It's a pleasure, I'm Broly and that's Chilai. Izuku. Now I remember, you're that Saiyan who once faced Gogeta in the past, it's a pleasure to see you again. Chilai. So this is where you live, it's interesting. Izuku. Yes, but I want to know why they are in this place since it is my house. Broly. Well, they sent us thinking that it was a good idea to send us with someone who can take care of us even a little. Chilai. We say it more because of the times that Broly loses control, especially because of that. Izuku. So Chilai and Broly it seems that we will live together although I was never able to plan this, I can take it as good news, and luckily I have some rooms for you. Broly. Then we can live with you it seems. Izuku. Well, I can't leave them alone, Broly is too strong, and we still don't know about the existence of Saiyans, which is why we have no choice but to do it. Broly. This is good to know. Izuku. Anyway, you can get settled, anyway I must tell you everything about the things of this world. She said it while she started walking so she could tell them everything while they only got to hear what he was telling them. Chapter 5 The days began to pass in which Izuku only had to get used to the three girls who began to live in his house, since he was currently at UA in the English classes being given by present Mick, being the same one that they were only having the normal classes until at one point they began to have a class of classes without a teacher, because he had not yet arrived. Izuku. Wow, it's boring, it almost seems like nothing important is really going to happen from what I can see. Momo. Anyway, I don't think it's as much as you say, we just have to prepare for anything. Hiroshima. It's true that the teacher we have as much as possible is preparing something that won't turn out well. Izuku. Maybe, it doesn't matter anyway, it's still the same to me. Jiru. It almost seems like nothing can be surprising. Izuku. Because I don't think anything will surprise me in this place to be honest. Hiroshima. Hey Izu bro, I would like to know something about that girl. Izumi, it seems like they know each other. Izuku. Something like that, it doesn't matter anyway, it's just some small things from the past that don't matter anymore. Momo. Although saying that nothing matters anymore is a little hard to believe given how you treat her. Izuku. Just a few things between us, nothing important, as I told you, he just did things that he didn't have to do. At one point All Might passed through the door in a strange way, and many were surprised by this except Izuku who already knew about this when he felt his presence. All Might. Hello class, today you are going to have classes with me, please, you must wear the suits that the UA made for all of you. He said it while a box began to come out of the wall, just so that everyone could go and change, since in the locker room the boys were calm although excited. Hiroshima. I can't wait to start this class, All Might is going to teach us. Haminari. It's true we can use all our strength now. In a moment they began to see how Mineta was shaking. Sato. Even Mineta is excited. Mineta. Nothing like that, there is a hole that faces the girl's side, we should take advantage of something like that. At that they only began to have a somewhat strange look. Hiroshima. Hey, don't do that, it's nothing for men. Sato. That's true. Lita. Mineta-san shouldn't do things like that. Before the dwarf could do anything he ended up taking a hit, causing him to end up flying only to crash into a wall. Izuku. Before being a hero, learn to be human. He said it as he began to walk in order to continue his path, as everyone began to do the same, as Izuku had a black shirt tight to his short-sleeved body, a black vest with yellow edges along the neck and shoulders, shoes. Black with pants of the same color apart from a blue ribbon at the waist, ankles and wrists. The girls only blushed at such a thing from the young man. Uraka. You really look good in that suit. Izuku. Well, it's just a costume that I was inspired by my teacher. Sato. He must be someone strong. All Might. Please everyone, I would like you to see me a little, I'm going to explain the test right now. Mina. We just hope it's not like Professor Azawa's. All Might. Of course not, these are battles between villains against heroes, the villains are going to leave a bomb inside a building that has a countdown, if it reaches zero, or they defeat the heroes, then the villains win, but if the heroes manage to defeat the villains and touch the bomb, then the heroes win. She said it with her smile before everyone's gaze. Momo. What are the teams going to be like? All Might. It's going to be random. In this way they began to choose the team's being. A. Made up of Izuku and Yuraka. B. Made up of Shoji and Shoto. C. Made up of Mineta and Momo. B. Made up of Bakugo, Izumi and Lita. B. 
Made up of Mina and Aoyama. F. Made up of Sato and Kota. G. Made up of Jiru and Kaminari. H. Made up of Tokoyami and Tsai. I. Made up of Ajiro and Toru. J. Made up of Kirishima and Siro. Uraka. How good we are going to be a team. Izuku. If that's good enough, I guess we'll do well as a group. Uraka. Without a doubt we are going to be quite strong. All Might. It's good that they say that because Group A is facing Group D. But that they could only begin to prepare as Uraka was next to Izuku looking at the place. Uraka. What can we do? Izuku. Well, I only plan to go and confront them, I want you to look for the bomb and don't let your guard down no matter what it is. Uraka. Yes. But that they began to have permission to enter and they passed inside the place where they began to walk until Izuku stopped. Izuku. He's getting close to Bakugo from the looks of it. Uraka. Really? But that he watched as Bakugo ended up showing up only for him to look quite upset. Bakugo. Now you're going to know who is the strongest of all. Izuku. Let's better do something. Uraka goes for the bomb, but takes the stairs at the back, Izumi comes from the front. Uraka. Yes. In that way he began to leave that part before the gaze of Bakugo who began to walk towards him. Bakugo. Don't think you can handle me miserable. Izuku. We're going to know that right now. When the ash-haired man was about to advance, at one point he ended up receiving a kick to his stomach, making him move away, followed by another blow to his face, making him retreat, but at one point he tried to hit him with his explosions, but failed since his hand came out of the smoke. From Izuku who grabbed him by the neck to lift him up. Bakugo. How is this possible? Izuku. Don't think that just because you can make explosions you can defeat me like that, you must have more than that. He said it while behind him Izumi began to appear, who threw a fireball, thinking that he was going to be able to do something by hitting it like the rest, but they began to see how when the smoke left Izuku was simply surrounded by a transparent sphere. Dot. Izumi. How is this possible? At one point he ended up getting kicked causing him to crash into a wall. Izuku. It's called Evil Barrier, it prevents a certain amount of attacks and makes it impossible for me to be hurt. Bakugo. That makes it more interesting. He said it while he began to launch more explosions in order to hurt him, but nothing happened, since the young man was simply feeling quite well, since he was coming out of the smoke without a single scratch to hit the ash-haired man in the face. Dot. Izuku. Understand one thing, Bakugo, you can't take me in exchange for you being able to use all your strength, something that I see as quite impossible. Bakugo. With all my strength, then I'm going to destroy you right now. He said it while he raised his arms to remove the safety of one of the grenades, in order to give it to Izuku, who managed to see it only to raise a hand. Izuku. The Big Bang attack. But that he ended up launching the attack, causing them to end up colliding before everyone's eyes, only for them to remain for a few moments, until it exploded, only for it to end up being a huge cloud of smoke, which remained until it left revealing a tired Bakugo, and a fairly stable Izuku without feeling anything. Bakugo. How the hell are you still like that? Izuku. That doesn't matter to you, punishing impulse. But that he stepped towards Bakugo, so that he himself received some blows that were marked on his body, only for him to end up spitting saliva, while he fell to the floor at such a thing. Izumi. Impossible just did that, and doesn't even seem to move other than to move forward. From the room everyone watched in surprise as Bakugo fell before Izuku, who was only still without a single scratch. Hiroshima. I knew I was strong, but I never imagined how strong. Aminari. There's a reason he showed great confidence by making Yuraka go away and leave him alone. Mina. And she doesn't seem to have used all of his power. In the building Izumi looked at the young man with jet black hair while he began to tremble. Izumi. This is impossible, I can't believe this is really happening, I have no chance of being able to defeat him. Izuku only began to walk past one side of it, only to reach a room where he only looked up. Izuku. Are you ready Yuraka? But that the girl only ended up clinging to a column. Yuraka. Yes, I'm ready. But that the young man put his hands together as he began to charge up some Kai. Izuku. Came Haim Haya. But that the attack went towards the ceiling, beginning to break from it until reaching the end, only for it to end up happening like the original story, with Yuraka ending up touching the bomb, making the heroes the winners. After a while they were in the room with the rest of the class. All Might. Now, class, I would like you to try to indicate the errors of everyone who participated in the first part of the test. Momo. If I can say it, Professor Bakugo was too impulsive to launch himself into combat without having an apparent plan of attack, Izumi did the same when she saw how her partner left, although she tried to attack by surprise, and Yuraka was initially under guard. Something he shouldn't have done. All Might. Good, but the rest had to make a similar mistake or something at least. Momo. To be honest, no. But that they watched as Izuku raised his hand making them look at him. Izuku. If I may say something, I could see some mistakes. All Might. Then you can tell them if you saw them. 
Izuku. To begin with, they were not good villains in this test, they must behave like real villains, and villains are not so different from heroes, they have something that makes them equal. All Might. So that sounds interesting, I'd like to hear that. Izuku. Well, clearly having motives, Bakugo demonstrated that he had the ability to be a villain by attacking me and stopping my steps in order to accomplish his objectives, but Izumi stayed still when I went to leave the room where I had to make my attack to finish. My plan and if Lita had paid more attention and remembered that her only objective was to touch the bomb, then she would have worried more about the bomb than about her health. Hiroshima. I don't understand what makes us villains the same. Izuku. Well, they risk everything, even their health, to fulfill their objective of hurting, and we do the same, but to protect. Jiru. Now that he says it, it's true. Izuku. Another mistake was that I could have ended the fight immediately, but I wanted your rocket to participate in my plan even though it wasn't necessary. All Might. In that case it's ready, now the next ones are going to happen. That way they were going to pass, although before Mineta could go he was interrupted by Izuku who had a smile. Izuku. Hey little guy, Momo is a good friend that I've had for a long time, you better not do anything to her, or you'll know what it's like to make me angry, do you understand? Mineta. Yes I understand. She said it with clear fear in her words. Momo. Thanks for that Izuku. She said it while she was hiding a slight blush only to leave the place in order to do the test, passing everything as the original story, and everything was normal. Chapter 6, At the UA. Everyone was leaving and Izuku was calm if it weren't because he could see the reporters asking about All Might making him end up getting tired for that reason, only to start walking to start passing through the people, in order to get to his class arriving. To get what he wanted since he managed to get to his class where he entered calmly without problems to be able to sit in his place. Hiroshima. They're too much of a reporter really. Aminari. And everyone asking about All Might seems like they're really interested in that topic. Mineta. Maybe we can convince them to ask questions about us. Jiru. Don't try it, you're just going to waste your time, they only came for All Might, they don't care about us. Izuku. Unfortunately that's true, we have no choice but to accept things as they are. Sado. But it shouldn't be that way, there must be something else we can do. I mean, they're not just coming for him. Izuku. In fact, they may be right. There is no way they will be interested in us until we leave this academy and become the greatest. But that, some of them just kept thinking about his words until they saw Azawa enter, who seemed tired due to the problems with the reporters that he had recently. Azawa. Everyone listen well, we have to continue with the classes so we are going to do an important topic, you have to elect a president for the class, I don't care who it is, or how you do it, as long as when you can choose someone I will be better. He said it while he looked at everyone without knowing that with those same words, he caused everyone to get up from their seats so they could start talking giving reasons why they can become class presidents. Mineta. I can be, if they choose me I swear I will make the girl's skirt shorter. Bakugo. No, we need the extras to lead this class, but they need me. Hiroshima. No, a real man should be the one who can lead the class properly. Haminari. I support Mineta's idea but with me. Mina. I can make them have parties so we can party all the time. Everyone was giving more reasons without being able to be heard until Izuku just gave a sigh as he went to get up making some look at him, causing some to shut up because of this. Izuku. If you allow me to speak, I would just like to say a few things, the president of the class should not be someone who sees the rest as inferior, he should not proclaim himself more of a man than the rest, he cannot make the girl's skirts be shorter, you can't do things like parties all the time, you only show your reasons that serve to fulfill your ambitions, but the truth is that you must be a person who cares about the class and not about yourself, see the things of the rest, that's why we shouldn't vote for ourselves. Given that, some of them looked at each other just so that they could start talking to each other about the issues, thinking about how to elect a president until they were able to do it, being like the original story, with Izuku being the president and Momo being the vice president who were in front of everyone. Azawa. By votes you were elected. Izuku. I'm starting to think I shouldn't have spoken. Momo. But if you hadn't, everyone would have continued like animals in the same way. Izuku. Now that you say it's true, I guess my first decision as class president is to elect Momo Yayoi Rozu as class president. At that, some looked at the young man surprised because she had just completely rejected that position and ended up giving it to her partner, as if it were nothing. Momo. Are you really saying that? Izuku. Yes, to be honest, I'm not qualified to be someone who leads the rest. I'm fine, as president, aside, I'm a warrior, not a president. He said it while she gave a smile to the girl who only looked at the young man who was calm, as if it were nothing in the face of such a thing. Azawa. Well you heard, just say a few words and you can go. I saying that they only paid attention while I was talking. Momo. I swear I plan to do my best as class president and make it better for everyone. 
he said it with a smile as they went to leave the place only to end up in the cafeteria where not much was happening. Izuku only took his food as he went to go to a table, getting one despite a huge amount of food that he ended up taking. And I was going to continue that way if it weren't for the fact that I heard how part of the class began to approach. Hiroshima. Hey Izu bro, I think you overdid the food, you just ordered too much. Izuku. This is nothing, my metabolism is different from yours, that's why I have to eat too much, because I have to use a lot of energy in my training and in my fights, that's how I stay. Hiroshima. It seems to be true. Hamanari. You would have still chosen someone else to be class president. Momo. Do you have something against me? Hamanari. It's nothing like that, I just would have liked to see the girl's skirts actually shorter. Izuku. If I was able to choose Momo it is because of her intelligence and she can have good leadership, which is why I am not interested in having that position. He said it while he only concentrated on eating without paying much attention to the rest. Hiroshima. Hey Izu bro, I think you can tell us something interesting about your quirk. Izuku. I don't have anything interesting, I just have a great power apart from the fact that I have transformations. Jiru. And what are they like? Izuku. There's nothing special about them, I just increase my power and get stronger, just that, there's not much to tell. Hiroshima. I would like to see you in a fight using all your power to know what your limits are. Izuku. Please I have no limits, I am a warrior and as a warrior I can never have limits. Hiroshima. You speak like a real man, I wish you were our president. At that the young man only looked at him with doubts in his mind. Izuku. Are you crying? Hiroshima. It's not what you think, it's male tears. He said it while he was trying to stand up against such a thing. Izuku. If I'm going to take into account that I didn't hear that. The young man could only continue with his food in the face of such a thing. Momo. So what are we going to do? Izuku. At the moment we don't have anything to do except pass the time until classes end, anyway I don't think anything else will happen. At one point they began to hear the alarm, only so that it was the one that warned everyone that they had entered the UA causing chaos, as students began to run out of the place, causing Izuku's food to be completely ruined, while he looked out a window. Momo. Come on, we have to go. Izuku. No need, there are reporters. Momo. How are there reporters? And that I point to the entrance of the UA. His security was destroyed, making the young woman see how the young man was absolutely right, as the reporters tried to find a way to keep up with him. Izuku. I think we should calm everyone down. Momo. Yes but I don't know how to do it. The young man only stood up as he began to fly to get on top of everyone who began to look at him. Izuku. Please, if you look out the window you will see reporters who are just trying to get to the UA try to calm down. Some began to pay attention, causing them to calm down about such a thing little by little, only for them to begin to warn the rest that they were only listening by continuing with the chain, so that in this way, they would begin to go to their classrooms, while Izuku only began to go down. Momo. He never thought that such a thing would actually work. Izuku. Nobody thinks about it until it's done. Hiroshima. And how were you sure it was going to work? Izuku. I thought that if some people started looking out the window at what was happening, word of what was happening would spread, and that way everyone would calm down. Lita. I think it was a good plan, now we should be able to go to our classes before the teacher wants to scold us. Izuku. I'm sometimes doubting whether you're human or just a robot. The young man was only saddened by that while they began to go to their classes where upon arriving everyone went to his seat while the teacher began to enter more tired than before from having to keep the reporters. Azawa. As you know now, the reporters were tranquilized and kicked out of UA, so we are not going to have so many problems, now I must give you the notice that soon we will go to the USJ, I hope that at least cheers you up a little. Lita. Professor who is the USJ. Azawa. I'm just going to tell them that it's going to be a place where they're going to test their quirks apart from wearing their hero costumes, I hope that at least helps. With that, many began to get excited about such a thing except Izuku who was calm as if it were nothing. Jiru. It seems like someone is not very cheerful from the looks of it. Izuku. It's just that it doesn't encourage me much, but it's not a fight that encourages me and is good. Momo. We don't know that until we go to the USJ. We may have a good fight for you. Izuku. I hope so, I just want a good fight, nothing more. When classes ended they began to leave, and Izuku was only calm until at one point he began to feel a power that was very low, but evil, making him look at a part where the trees were waiting for something, until he heard a voice that became familiar to him. Dot. Izumi. Hey Izuku, wait a little, don't leave. Izuku. Now what do you want? Izumi. I just want you to come home, you know, with mom, for us to be a family like we were before. Izuku. So it was just that, I'm not interested in something like that, you must know that pretty well. Izumi. Please, you can't avoid us all the time, you have to let us get a little closer at least. Izuku. 
If I remember correctly, I already had your rejection, so I refused to have anything close to you, just that. He said it as he began to fly away from the girl who was watching this, while he began to get sad at not being able to get his brother to return to his house. Hiroshima. It seems like he really wants me to go see his mother, I guess we should do something. Mina. Yes, but if we get involved but we do wrong, we can make him end up hating us. Momo. It's better to wait for the moment, we can't do anything until something happens later, we just stay distant for the moment. By saying that they could only nod their heads knowing that they were not going to be able to do anything to get closer to the young man. In the tree area Tamura just looked at the class as he began to relax. Tamura. A little more and I ended up discovering myself, I think I should be more careful with that young man, he can sense my presence from the looks of it. He said it as he started to leave to avoid trouble. Chapter 7, At the USJ. Everything was being prepared while a bus where class 1 was preparing was only arriving, and they were calm without doing anything but talking, although Izuku was beginning to have a bad precept until they arrived, happening like the original story where they entered only to see the place that was quite big inside. Hiroshima. This place is pretty big. Mina. So this is the USJ it's great. Yuraka. It seems like you have too many things in this place, I guess we're going to do something pretty big. Izuku just walked while he watched until he heard something from the teachers talking about someone who was missing. 13. Now all the students listen now, we will have to start with classes, since we are only going to practice with environmental disasters. Momo. I think it makes sense to practice our quirks in earthquakes, fires and more. Izuku. I guess that's true, but there aren't many things that can be done anyway. 13. As you know, there are dangerous quirks that can kill, so we are going to be careful when using them, some like the one I have. Hiroshima. So we'll have to use this place to rescue hostages. 13. Exactly, some of you are going to be hostages and others the heroes. Izuku. It's just something simple anyway. At one point the lights began to fail, while Izuku began to feel a powerful presence in the center of the place, causing him to get into a combat pose, while he looked at the center of the place. Azawa. What's wrong Izuku? It's just a light failure. Izuku. It's not that, I'm feeling a strange presence in the center of the place. Given that, they saw how the lights exploded only to end up forming a portal in the center of the place, where some villains began to emerge along with a Nomu, apart from a being that they could notice being cooler, that demon of the cold that was only in front of everyone. Dot. Hiroshima. Great, he has his personal villains. 13. They are not fake villains, they are real. Azawa. Now get all the students out of this place, they must leave, I'll take care of the villains. He said it while he launched himself into combat, Izuku was about to do the same until he was taken by the arm, with Momo trying to carry him. Momo. Come on, we have to go. Izuku. But we can't do it, Azawa won't be able to, he's in danger. Before they left Kurajiri began to surround them just to have them trapped. Kurajiri. Hello everyone, we are the. Before he finished speaking he was dispersed by a sphere of Kai, Izuku being the only one, so that it began to float in the air. Izuku. Wait a bit right now I have to bring the teacher. But that he began to go to the battle where Azawa was fighting, until a Kai beam hit his right arm, making him only retreat, but another Kai beam hit his left leg, causing him to fall to the floor. Azawa. Damn that really hurt. Cooler. It's a shame I thought I was going to have some combat, but it looks like at least I'm going to have a little fun. Azawa tried to erase his quirk, but he could only receive another beam on his other arm, causing him to scream in pain at the being, who was beginning to enjoy that before everyone's eyes, but before he could continue, he ended up receiving a kick in the face as a result of Izuku who pushed him away, followed by grabbing Azawa to throw him into the class, and they caught him. 13. Ready now we have to go. Izuku. No, go away, I can't let Cooler go. He said it while he looked at the demon making them notice that he was referring to that thing. Cooler. Interesting, you're a Saiyan, I guess I can have fun with you. Izuku. Maybe you can say that, but you won't be able to with me. Cooler. I hope so. Just try to show what you're really worth. At that, Izuku launched himself against a demon who did the same, bumping fists, making a wave of wind that sent some villains flying, just so that they would continue hitting in the face of such a thing. Kurajiri. Damn I couldn't disperse them all. Tamura. It doesn't matter, but I guess wrongly that young man is the strongest in the class, I think that if we kill him, we will be able to put despair in everyone. But that, they looked at how they were fighting, as they kept those blows against each other until at one point, Izuku managed to take the lead a little, kicking the demon, who was not far behind, punching the young man in the face, but no. I managed to move it. Cooler. What the hell. Izuku. Come on, miserable, I know you well, and I know that I can't defeat you in my base state. Then they saw how from one moment to the next his hair changed to blonde, surprising everyone while Cooler only began to get angry. Cooler. That damn transformation, I'll eliminate you. 
He tried to attack him only so that Izuku managed to dodge him to be able to hit him, followed by starting to attack the demon, by kicking him in the face, followed by a blow to the stomach, only for him to retreat from such a thing. And it was even worse when he received a blow to the face, making him he flew away from such a thing. But at one point, he managed to stop only to throw himself at Izuku, who stopped his fists although he couldn't stop a blow from his tail, causing him to start being hit by Cooler, starting to have an even fight. Hiroshima. Impressive then that's his transformation. Hamanari. They look very even. Azawa. More importantly, students must leave, they cannot stay in this place. Even that, some only thought of paying attention if it weren't for someone noticing this. Demura. Let's better start with a nice kill, Nomu kills those people. At that, the Nomu launched himself against everyone, just so that everyone could see how that monster was approaching, until he ended up receiving a kick from Izuku, causing him to end up going against a wall. Izuku. You better focus on me. At one point he turned around, stopping a blow from Cooler who was only trying to advance. Cooler. Miserable Saiyan, I will kill you, I will not let them stop me again. At that, the young man only kicked him to go against him, starting to walk away from the class, while the Nomu began to come out of the rubble, only to launch himself against him, starting to have a two against one battle, only for Izuku to begin to have some problems with such a thing, but he managed to keep them at bay. 13. This is bad, you guys should take your teacher from this place, you can't stay. Uraraka. But Lita already went for all of them, it can't take long. 13. It's dangerous anyway, they should take Azawa away from this place. He said it as he passed him while in combat at one point Cooler was pulled away just so he could see the class getting an idea. Cooler. Let's see how you do with this. He launched a Kai slash directly at the class being noticed by Izuku who only looked worried. Izuku. No, this is bad. At one point he took the Nomu's blow to hit him repeatedly followed by a kick to the head, making him move away only for him to end up teleporting, with the class they saw how the attack was approaching making them prepare for the worst, but in a moment at that moment, Izuku stood in front of him, receiving the cut squarely in his chest, barely using a slight Kai barrier to avoid being split in half, but he still ended up receiving great damage. The young man ended up spitting blood as he began to fall only to receive a kick from Cooler that sent him crashing to the floor. Cooler. I would like to destroy all those children, but it gives me more pleasure to destroy that Saiyan. He said it as he began to go against Izuku, and the villains thought about advancing, but were stopped by the demon. Demura. Well let's destroy the class. Cooler. Better not, we have to make this guy suffer until we get bored and just kill him. Demura. Hey, you can't give me orders. Cooler. Listen, you're trying to be a miserable villain, what we have at our mercy is a Saiyan, something that if we don't do something now, later on, he's going to be your worst enemy, a problem that you're not going to want to get into, it's better for them to see this to know that we're not joking. He said it as he began to point his finger at the young man, but the Nomu had other plans and began to go after the class, but ended up being cut in half because of the demon. Cooler. I said no, now learn to be villains. The Nomu was only able to reconstruct half of it as he looked annoyed, but before moving forward he was interrupted by Tamura, who stopped him with a simple order. Tamura. Don't do it Nomu, I just want to see what he means about being a real villain. At that everyone looked at the man who was only beginning to be happy about this. Cooler. Normally I don't do this, but my younger brother Frieza does it, but right now I want to know how he feels, how much pleasure he is going to feel. At that point they began to see how the young man began to get up little by little, but a beam of Kai hit him, causing him to scream in pain, followed by another beam in his body, and another causing him to begin to scream in pain, surprising the villains. For the cruelty of the being they were seeing because no matter the screams, no matter what was happening, he was only doing that for pleasure, laughing while listening to the screams of the young man, seeing that the being with whom they came to be close while the class was truly cruel. They watched in horror as the young man was tortured, while little by little he could no longer endure those attacks, as the screams became worse each time in his voice. Momo. I can't stand this, we have to help him. 13. It's not very dangerous. Sado. But we can't let him do something, he's going to kill him this way. Shoto. Of course, if we all attack it at the same time we can do something. Even that, everyone looked at the young man who was only suffering until at one point they began to decide. In the torture the young man was suffering as the villains came to feel sorry for the young man, even themselves wanting the demon to stop having that title well until at one point he stopped. Cooler. I think that's enough, I'm getting bored, I better kill you once and for all. He was about to attack him, but at one point he was frozen completely because of Shoto, surprising the villains for such a thing, but the ice was nothing for the demon who managed to destroy him, so that he turned around looking at the class. Shoto. He broke free as if nothing had happened. Momo. That doesn't matter now we'll take care of it. 
all those who had distant attacks began to attack the demon, but it had no effect on him before the young man's gaze, and the villains only moved away, when they stopped the smoke began to leave, while the villain was only unharmed. Cooler. Learn this if you want to go further, then kill the people I'm trying to protect. He was about to attack them in order to kill them before Izuku looked on, who only noticed this to make him worry. Izuku. Don't stop, don't do it, please. The demon was just laughing at such a thing. Cooler. You better look. The young man just watched as he charged the attack until he could only scream. Izuku. Don't stop. The demon was about to attack, but at one point when he tried to attack with that beam to kill them all, it simply exploded, making them doubt that while the smoke began to leave, and when it left they noticed how the demon was somewhat afraid while in front of him, there was an Izuku with hair more bristly than before, and with rays on his body. Izuku. I said stop. He said it as he expelled a greater amount of power under the gaze of the demon that he was only beginning to be afraid of. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.